All right, hello, my name is Fernando, or Fed557. Today I'm going to do a thorough review on the GW5000. I will be doing two parts. One, I will discuss the model and the module and the pricing. And in the second video, I will compare the 2009 release versus the 2012 release. Um, and I'm only doing that because I'm waiting on a caliper to measure some things. So... First of all, let me go into the different packaging that it comes with. I've already discussed some of the differences between the 5000 and the 5000B, but I didn't show the packaging. Here is the 5000B packaging. It comes in a box that's a little bit bigger, and that is because it comes in a tin. Here's the 3159 is the module. The tin is this uh, cool gunmetal tin and it's pretty basic here's the GW 5000B and I'll put that on the side the 5000 comes in the Japan domestic market regular packaging here again is the manual and in these uh, fake uh, leatherette type boxes and in this uh, Cool pillow. All right, the GW5000 was released in 2009, and it was about in May, late May, I believe. The retail price on the positive display at that time in 2009 was $387, and the negative display was $438, but with all uh, Japan releases, you can always get them cheaper than the retail price. Uh, and at that time, according to my G-Shock, they were bring, being produced in 2,000 units per month. The back of the case, and I'll start with that, has a batch number that you can see here. That is not a serial number, it just means what factory it was produced in, what year, and what day of the year. Um, you know, just so you know. It is made in Japan, which is nice. It is also a screw back. The GW5000B has been discontinued, and I'll talk about pricing later. The GW5000 was released again in 2012, I believe, in April or May, and that is when I got mine. So I've had this a while now, and, and that's why I think it's an adequate time for me to do a review on it. The retail for the GW5000 is now 38,000 yen, which converts to about $487, and the reason why this is so high is because of the economic recession slash depression, the exchange rate of yen to dollars has dropped down significantly for Americans. So a dollar only buys you 70 yen now before it used to be much more. So this watch is basically made to look like the first G-Shock, except it doesn't have the red around here. But... What I mean is it's designed to have a screw back, but yet also be updated technologically, meaning it now has a multiband 6. The size of the watch is 48 by 42 by 13. It has a weight of 73.8 grams. The screw back, as I've just discussed, is DLC coated, which means diamond-like. And it's made that way, supposedly, so it can last longer, the wear is much better, and it also is supposed to be more scratch resistant. You don't really scratch your watches if you're wearing them because your wrist protects them, but nonetheless it's supposed to make it last longer. It also has a mirror-like finish, which is just made to be more quality. So you can see this uh, screw, it reflects it you know, pretty well. Um, all the case is stainless steel. Here's another one of my models that I opened up. So as you can see, there is no resin anywhere on the case. 
as a DW5600E or really any other uh, non-5000 model. This is all stainless steel. And this is the DLC coating. Um, so it is higher quality and that's why it's uh, it's more heavy. The This one is also not a silver stainless steel but uh, this like gunmetal look which I think makes it look pretty awesome. If you open up a GW5000B you'll also notice that these buttons are also black and I plan to do that someday but I just haven't gotten those buttons in yet. The it's waterproof to 200 feet, it's tough solar, it's a multiband 6, which means it gets reception in China, the USA, two towers in Japan, the UK, and Germany. The has world time for 48 cities, it's got 29 different time zones, so here's the world time. Uh, it's got five alarms, one has a snooze. Here's a stopwatch, as I said it goes up to 24 hours. It does have a countdown timer, and I actually don't know up to what level this goes, but I'll add it in the comments later. I don't know it off of the top of my head. The As far as the battery is concerned, it lasts 10 months. It, it is solar in power-saving state, which basically means that at night it like turns off, or if it's not being used, it turns off. It supposedly can last 26 months, which is quite incredible. Here is the battery indicator, low, medium, high. If you're on medium, you're okay, don't go crazy about that. Here is the alarm, the signal, and the snooze function. When you do receive a uh, atomic reception, it'll say received up here, such as with this watch. Um, and PS is the power saving function. Uh, one of the things that I have don't really like about the screw back is that because of this DLC coating or maybe the mirror like finish, whenever you get the watch wet, it tends to, this part sticks to your wrist. And it's, it's not too bad, but I mean, I guess it's something that they could have tried to avoid. The buttons on this watch are without a doubt some of the hardest buttons uh, to push that I've ever had to use on a G-Shock other than probably the older Mudmans but I mean it requires some force and this is without it having a bezel once you put a bezel on it you don't really have much space here so you you have to you can't do this you have to use your nails this is the light it's like a greenish color it's pretty bright not as bright as the DW6600, obviously, but nonetheless, I think it's more than adequate. All right, next I'll talk about pricing. The GW5000 currently is still being produced in Japan. You can only get it in Japan. If you want to buy it new, you should be able to buy it between $389 up until $415, $420 from one of the big three. The big three being Seiya, Chino, Katsuiguchi. I've only purchased watches from Katsuiguchi. Um, I purchased them at higher, like around $410, but I'm really comfortable with him, so... That's what I decided to do. Chino has probably the best prices at 389 390 somewhere around there. Currently, they're out of stock with those three. If you go on eBay, obviously, the prices are much higher. In November or October of 2012, they should be able to get more stock. But it seems to me that these are these are regularly produced. But they're not produced in the same numbers as the 5600E or the 6900s. So when they come out, people want to buy them. And there's just not enough stock right now. The market has not yet been saturated. But it has begun to be saturated. Meaning, if you want to buy a used one, the prices are coming down. In uh, March, February of 2012, you probably had to pay... Um, 350 
Now you could probably get it in between 285 to 330 and this is on the forums. So right now these are not, these won't go up in value right now. I don't know if they will at some point in the future, maybe like in 20 years, but I don't buy watches as investments for 20 years down the line. But these are not limited editions. These are somewhat limited production in that they're not produced on the same level as some other regular models, but they're still being produced. So that's why they're not going to go up in value. Um, as for the GW5000, that one's been discontinued. And because of that, it's extremely expensive. And since November of 2011, I have seen one, no, two on eBay, on eBay USA for $900. And in Yahoo Auctions Japan, I think it's fair to say you can get one listed about once a month. Pricing on it in Yahoo Auctions Japan because of the differences in the dollar and the yen is extremely high. Uh, I've seen new ones, I mean like with even the sticker on the back, sell for 750 to 850 Some really beat up ones with no boxes, no manuals. There was gunk, I mean, visibly in the pictures here, scratches, those even sold for $600, um, I The cheapest GW5000B I have ever seen in Japan sold for less than, it was low 500s, I believe. Um, and the only reason why I got it that cheap, it listed the watch as a DW5000B and didn't use G-Shock. They just put Casio. Um, so I didn't get as many hits, and I, I picked it up. I decided I had to take advantage of it, even though I already had one. So for the GW5000B, if you want to get one, the best, the best place, I think, to get one is the forums, but they don't come up often. The second best place is Yahoo Auctions Japan, but, I mean, you can expect to pay, I would say, at least $650, and that's not including... Uh, shipping or commissions if you use a third-party bidder up to eight hundred and fifty dollars and and that's not a joke that's just how much they go for sometimes one of the things I forgot to mention is the resin it's not the resin that's used on the regular 5600 models this is a soft urethane if that's how you say it it is much much softer it is very comfortable um, the most the most comfortable resin I have worn, except maybe on the GS 1300B. So, and that's why it's more expensive. Um, I think uh, if you buy it from Pack Parts, it's probably fifteen dollars for the strap, but you have to wait a couple weeks online. It's it's much more expensive on eBay, but it's I mean if you want to upgrade your GWM 5600 or 5610. If you buy a strap for it, I think you'll be more than pleased. It's 3159. Does have better digits than in the past. And also the, sc the screen clarity is, is better than uh, any 5600E I've, I've used. The new GWM5610 has the same module. And also the GWS5600, which is the one that has a titanium screw back or back plate. Um, so what would I like to see for for the future of this model if, if Casio decides to change anything? Um, I'd like the buttons to be longer, like the 5600C. I would like, um, I really like this finish, but it would be nice if they could find a way to you know have it not stick to your wrist that much when it gets wet and it's obviously a uh, attracts fingerprints like crazy but I mean look at how good that mirror image is and let me see if I can focus it you can see my phone there yeah it's it's pretty good um, I'd also like to see you know different colors and stuff like that I've gotten resin from other 5600s um, 
I wish these buttons were black and these screws were black like in the GW5000B but other than that it's it's my favorite G-Shock I mean I do use it as you can see by this stuff right here uh, I have gotten it scratched I think my screen has hairline scratches I have three positive displays and two negatives if you guys have any questions feel free to ask um, as of now and probably for the future this is the only model that I'm gonna own the only resin model other than the two MRGs that I have um, it's, it's just my favorite model um, I think it's the perfect G-Shock for me obviously it's on the more expensive side and it doesn't have as many functions as like a Mudman but I really don't use the countdown timers or the stopwatch or the alarms that much I just use it to tell time and the screen clarity on this is, is just very very good it's much better than the 5600E the digits are like fatter um, so for me as a practical watch it's, it's just great the atomic function is awesome this uh, back casing just makes it a very high quality watch and the fact that it doesn't have you know any resin on it other than the bezel and the strap of course uh, makes me feel like it's a watch that's gonna last you know decades and I've just been making my own variations but at the end of the day this is the the just stock one is the one that I wear the most uh, the ones with colors that I have I don't really wear all the time because they don't go with everything and for me I want a watch that doesn't really attract attention and this is just it does that perfectly so that's it if you have any questions if you need help finding one or if you have any other questions about this model uh, feel free to comment and I'll try to help you out as best as I can um, so that's it thanks for watching and have a wonderful day